The Fiat 500 is one of the most popular small cars on sale. I should know, I bought one. But being popular doesn't necessarily mean it's the best. I should know, I bought one. Now the old one, which is one that I've got, was first around in 2007 and was, is, starting to feel a little bit long in the tooth. But now we've got a new one, look at this. Electric one, looks very familiar, but feels anything but. I'll tell you what, while I'm here, I'll do a review, but like and subscribe please, and bell button. Oh, and share it, share it with your friends. It's worth mentioning that you can still buy an old Fiat 500, a Fiat 500 with a hybrid badge on the boot lid, no less. This isn't it. This is the all new pure electric 500. It'll do up to 199 miles on a charge. Look closely and you'll notice the new front end, new lights, which I think look like cute little eyelids, and new bumpers. There's no grill now either. The overall shape is pretty iconic though, and it stays the same. And like before, you can buy the car with a retractable roof for around two and a half grand extra. The biggest visual changes come here in the cabin. You've got this very nice 10 and a quarter inch screen here in the middle, which is optional if you go for the lower trims. And these very nice digital instrument panel, which is just behind the steering wheel. Again, it looks lovely. The infotainment, oh my goodness so much better than what I have to contend with. It is so functional, got loads of features. It is very responsive as well. I mean, I can only dream of having wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto in mine. I don't have that, but you sit in here and you are just instantly connected. And there's also an app so that you can keep up to date on your charging and stuff as well, which is just fabulous. The old one, my one, just basically feels like a whole load of cheap plastic, whereas this one feels like it's been finished to a higher standard. However, Fiat have been very clever because this long swathe of black is just a very clever way of disguising the fact that it's just one long piece of cheap plasticness. However, I do like the piano keys and I feel like the steering wheel is wrapped in a really quite lovely material. Oh, and the door opens with a button rather than a cheap plastic handle, look. Practicality wise, this is still a very small car, but you do have some storage, door bins, cubbies, places to put your phone. I mean, I will show you the rear seats and the boot in a bit. There are four main specs to choose from. The most basic car is one of the cheapest new EVs on the market and is the only one available with the smaller of the two batteries. Fiat says it will do 118 miles on a charge and if you only pootle around town, it could be a really shrewd purchase. Those cars don't get an infotainment screen at all though. You'll either need to add on that as an option or make do with the mobile phone cradle that's provided as standard. Icon and La Prima cars come fully stocked with bigger wheels and different fabrics inside, but they aren't really worth the hefty premium you'll pay. Try hard enough and you can easily spend more than £30,000 on one of these. Full specs are available at carbuyer.co.uk. Right, first things first, shout out to this driving position. It is so much better than the old version. That's largely thanks to the electric specific packaging, which has basically freed up a load of space. So it helps make everything be a lot more comfortable. But the compliments don't stop there because whipping out that old rattly petrol engine has transformed this 500. I mean, it just feels so quiet but so nippy and quick, and it makes it nice and easy to drive as well, which is what you want in a small city car. Now the electric motor might only produce 117 brake horsepower, but you don't really need any more than that in a car of this size. I mean, 0 to 62 takes nine seconds, but really it's the 0 to 30 that I think is a much better measurement for a car like this. The action trim has a slightly smaller battery, but feels just as quick. Now by mounting the batteries on the floor has really helped make this car surprisingly agile. I mean, it's a lot better than the top heavy rolly old version. One of my little bugbears is the light steering because it can feel a little bit vague in this new one. However, it does have a super tight turning circle. Let me show you, ready? Look at this. Love that. 
Now it's fairly obvious this car has been designed to be at its best while it's in and around town. But unlike the old one, it doesn't feel so out of its depth when it's on faster roads like this. You do have some different driving modes, normal, which is um, normal, so it gives you all the power and performance that you need. If you're not in a hurry, there is range mode, which what that does is just restricts a little bit of power and ramps up the regenerative braking. Helps you maximise your range. Speaking of maximising range, there is also, if things get desperate, Sherpa mode. Now, Sherpa mode will basically guarantee that you're going to get to your destination with power left in the battery because not only does it severely reduce the output what's coming out of the electric motor but it gives you a top speed limit of 50 mile an hour and it turns off the climate control and then you're not going to want to use it that often but it just might come in handy if you're less careful than I am. Oh can I just mention one more thing please? When you turn the car off it does a really creepy song. Ready? Sounds like it's from a horror film. I don't want to hear that at night. While the new 500 beats most of its rivals when it comes to range, the Renault Zoe aside, it sits somewhere in the middle of the pack when it comes to charging. This mid-spec model with the bigger battery tops out at 85 kilowatts, beating the Mini Electric's 50 kilowatt maximum, but falling short of the Honda E's 100 kilowatt peak charging speed. Still, that's enough for 30 miles in five minutes or an 80% charge in just over half an hour. It's worth noting that the smaller battery entry-level model only charges at a mini matching 50 kilowatts. Charging either model at home is easily achievable overnight. Yeah, it's definitely bigger in the front. Like I said earlier, the driving position has improved dramatically, but there's no forgetting this is still a small city car with a relatively short wheelbase. So things were never going to be particularly transformative back here. I'm five foot six. I don't want to spend that much time back here. If you're any taller, you're just going to spend your whole time just moaning in the driver's ear hole about how much you hate it back here. I would like to say it's good for kids, but it's not really. It's a three-door car, so it's just going to be such faff getting the kids in and out of here. In my version, this is where I keep my two sausage dogs. It's perfect for them. It's the perfect size. Actually, the VW E Up and the Honda E are way more practical, although in some markets, Fiat offer a rear hinged door on the passenger side to make things a little bit better back here, but that's not available in the UK. Ha <laughs> ha, lovely stuff. This is where you would keep your bags, basically. Shall I show you the boot? I'll show you the boot. If, if someone could let me out, then I can show the boot. Yep. Now, as soon as you see the boot, that's when you realize why you're going to be keeping most of your bags on the rear seats, because it's tiny. 185 liters, it's no different to the other one. I'm not even gonna bother trying to get the car by a suitcase in here because I know it doesn't fit, because I have one of these. Even a mini is bigger than this. And if you go for the convertible, God help you, because that letterbox opening is even less practical. Of course, you can fold the seats down if you need to carry larger items, though it's worth noting that the seats on the Action models don't split down the middle, so it's all or nothing. But even so, the area isn't huge and there's a step where the seat bases meet the boot floor. There's a small amount of space under there for one of the cables, but unfortunately, it's not big enough for both. And that, boys and girls, brings us very nicely to the new Fiat 500's deal makers and deal breakers. Now, electric only, the 500 is impressively efficient. 199 miles is a pretty realistic estimate and you might see more if you only drive in town. The new 500 is not only vastly better than its petrol predecessor to drive, it's fun compared to rivals, nippy too. Fiat has done just enough to make this new 500 feel new without abandoning its retro roots. The bits you touch often feel high enough quality too. But it's still on the small side. Whichever way you look at it, this is not a car for those looking to carry much in the way of people or luggage. Finally, while the cheapest cars are good value, you miss out on some pretty key kit and the electric range is much shorter too. This new Fiat 500 is so much better than the old petrol one. Did I tell you that I've got the old petrol one? Yeah, because I have. And this car is a much more accomplished car. 
in comparison. I mean, we'd recommend stepping up to the mid-spec model if you can, because then you've got a bigger battery, you've got the more funky infotainment system. But if you can only afford to go to the entry-level model, you can buy one knowing that you're going for one of the most fun, one of the most characterful, and more importantly, one of the most frugal cars on sale. This was well overdue an update, and it was well worth the wait. And now I hate my car. If you fancy yourself a small EV or just a bit more space or a bit more range, then why not watch our review of the Renault Zoe or our electric cars playlist? Thanks for watching.